This here is going to be a painting video on how to paint Sister Superior Amala Novena. So this is the uh, Games Workshop um, special release Sisters of Battle plastic model, uh, the precursor to the to the line that'll be upcoming hopefully toward the end of the year. Uh, we grabbed one when we had a chance and we just finished painting it up now and if you think this looks great if you want to find out how we painted it please feel free to stay tuned if you're interested in videos like this please feel free to subscribe to the channel uh, if you like what this looks like please feel free to stay tuned and we'll show you how we painted our sister superior so this is our painting video for sister superior Amala Novena this is our box art right here this is our model. We just finished putting it together. And the first thing we did was base coat the whole thing with a Corax white spray. And that's how we've got what we've got here. Now the other thing to keep in mind is this is also a sub-assembly. We've actually done the leg in place here and the platform. And then we've kept the model itself separate. Only because we want to be able to paint inside of the two uh, loincloths because once it's all together, that's almost impossible to reach because it's blocked by both legs. So we did that little bit of sub-assembly there. So then what we'll do is we'll paint inside here, get that sorted, and then we'll affix it down halfway through painting once we've got the armor finished. So there's gonna be three key areas we're gonna to have to hit that's gonna involve a lot of dry brushing. We're gonna do the armor which is gonna go black and then dry brush with Eschen Gray. We're gonna do the base, which is probably gonna go Zandri dust, washed with maybe a Seraphin or, or an Agrax, and then we're gonna dry brush over that, something lighter. And then the red of the cloths are gonna go Mephiston red base and dry brush over that with the lighter reds. So each of those could make a mess on the others. So we're gonna to have to try to be careful with it. So the first thing we're gonna do for our model is we're gonna take a little bit of Abaddon Black, and we're going to start putting that all over our power armor. And we don't have to be super neat with it because we are going to go over the other colors. But we do want to try to reach all of those areas. Don't forget we can take it apart if we have to, to reach in between legs and things like that. So we'll do most of that now, and we'll meet back here when that's finished. So this is our unit now that we finished with the Abbott on black. And as you can see, we did the front plate, the two shoulders, leaving the Aguila here empty. We did the backpack, both legs. We took it off the base to do the inside of that leg there, as well as the top of this one. We did the other leg here, both arms, as you can see there tucking that arm up and inside under the shoulder pad, as well as the rest of the hips. And we did behind the backpack up to where the um, loincloth begins. So before we shade that, because we're gonna shade that with a darker color, uh, there's a few things that are gonna use the same shade, so we'll paint them now. So the red is gonna be done with that, so we're gonna take some Mephiston red, and we're gonna start doing all of the cloth work. So we're gonna use our very detailed brush here, and we're just gonna start painting the cloths here, just like so, with our Mephiston Red. Try not to get on the black, but anything else is fair game because we're all gonna paint that over again. But you wanna be as detailed and as careful as possible. So we'll do that now and we'll meet back here when we're finished. So this is our model now that we've finished with the Mephiston Red. And as you can see, we did the loincloths on both sides as well as between them. We hit the candles. We did a little bit of the arm sleeves here and here. There's a white uh, trim that goes here that wise up there. On the back end, we did the rest of the sleeves as well as the rest of the cloth, back ends of the candles, and we finished pretty much about there. So there's one more color to do before we wash, and it's gonna be Lead Belcher Base. And we're gonna use that to do the grenades, the chains, the respirators, and pretty much any of the metallics that are around, the uh, bolter as well. 
So we'll do all that now and we'll meet back here in a little bit. So this is our unit now that we finished with our metallics. So with that, our three primary colors that we're going to use um, initially are done. And we can go ahead and start washing. So we're going to wash with Newland Oil, which will go over all three of those colors. So we're just going to take a little bit on our brush. And cover the model like so. Trying not to let the cloths get pulled too, too much. I'll leave that dry and then we'll meet back here and we'll start our highlight layers so we can get the model glued back into one piece. We're going to start on the bottom platform here and we're going to may as well start building up some color there. So the first thing we're going to use is some Zandri dust and we're actually going to remove the main torso so we can get full access to the platform and we're just going to start painting Zandri dust all over it like so. We don't have to be completely neat and tidy because we are going to go over most of this with other colors but it's a good chance to get our base layer down. And we're using a nice watered down layer as you can see so it's filling in all the cracks and crevices which we'll then wash later to clean up. So we'll keep going with this and we'll be back here in a few minutes. So now that our washes are dry we're going to start putting on some highlight layers. The first thing we're going to do is take a little bit of Eschen Grey and we're going to dry brush all over the black armor we have here. We want to make sure that's a very, very dry brush because there isn't much to do. We want to make sure we highlight most of those details that are there. A little bit more. Like so. Really lightening up those details on the armor. So we're going to continue with that and we'll meet back here in a few minutes. So this is our model after we finish with the Eschen Grey. And we're going to take another highlight layer over the top of that, which will be with Dawnstone, which is exceptionally light. So we only need a tiny bit of it on a very, very, very dry brush. So making sure it's very, very dry. We're going to just lightly go over the front of that armor once more. Just add that last highlight as you see there that's forming. We're just hitting it over the very high points. Mostly just the top of the knees and the shin covers and the chest plate. Just like so. The next thing we're going to do is the red highlight. We're going to take a little bit more of that Mephiston red we used earlier and we're going to dry brush that on over the original. And just like so. Going to dry brush that with fist in red, making sure we don't hit the black. We're getting all those highlights. We're also going to hit the candles. Not worrying too much about the pedestals, but not hitting the floor. I'm going to do the same thing on the back end here.
So we'll keep going with this. We'll meet back here in a few minutes. So with that, our uh, first layer of red highlight is finished and we're gonna move on to a slightly brighter color. In this case, we're gonna go with Evil Sun Scarlet and we're gonna dry brush that right over the top of the Mephiston Red, just trying to hit the higher spots. Because it's a brighter highlight, we're gonna to wanna to use less of it. Just like so. And as you can see, we're starting to create a nice depth of color here with our different layers. So we're gonna continue with this and we'll meet back here in a few minutes. After that's finished, we're gonna take a little bit of Wild Rider Red, which is even brighter still. We're gonna add a dry brush of that right over the top. Over a cloth. Really, really brightening it up. So we'll do that for just the high points. And we'll meet back here in a few more minutes. So now that we're finished with the highlight of the red, we're gonna work on the base here. And how we're gonna start that with is with a shade of Seraphim Sepia. And we're gonna just coat that all over the base very carefully. And we're gonna use it to fill in all of the cracks and designs on the base plate. So we'll keep at this until we've got all the details highlighted. Don't forget the base. I'll we'll meet back here when it's done. So here's our unit now that that's completely dry and we give it plenty of time. So it's pretty much bone dry now. So what we would normally do is do the highlight layer over the top of it, except that once we do the highlight layer, when we go to do these candle scones here, um, when we're gonna wash them and shade them, it's gonna drain down into the stuff, the, the, the floor that we had already finished. So what we're gonna do is instead of finishing off the floor right now, we're going to finish off the candle scones instead um, and then once we're finished that, then we'll do the floor as the final step here. So moving on to the candles, what we're going to do is paint them sort of a base of gold and then bronze them up after because by using the gold there, we can also touch on all of the gold trim all around our model. So we're going to start with a little bit of Retributor armor and we're going to do the uh, candle holders as well as the little insignias and crosses here on um, the front of the unit as well as the um, icon here on the back and then we might touch up a few little spots throughout the model so we'll do that now and we'll meet back here in a few minutes and we'll see what we got done so with the gold finished what we did was we did the front little uh, design insignia as well as the one on the waist the one on her hand the both candelabras and then on the back we did the other one dangling from her belt so we finished all those with gold but before we shade that what we're going to do is do the face as well now most people use Bugman's glow I find it be a little bit too dark and then I find it a lot of work to lighten up so I'm actually going to do it with Rackard flesh so we're going to put a little bit of Rackard flesh with a very detailed brush right through here on the face and then while we're at it, we're gonna do all of the purity seals all around the model um, with a base of Rackhouse Flesh as well. So just a little bit of Rackhouse Flesh there. 
filling in all that area. I'm trying not to touch the hair, although we haven't started it yet, so we can always fix it. Get it down there inside the neck as well. Like so. So I'll finish that up and we'll meet back here in a few minutes. While we're still working on base coats, we may as well finish off the belt and the um, holsters and the satchels. So we're gonna do all that with a Rhinox hide. So we're gonna put a little bit there and just clean up the rest of that model. Um, just so aesthetically the base colors are are almost done. So we'll do that now and we'll meet back here again. So our model is coming along nicely now. We finished with the brown on the belt, the gold, as well as the face, uh, and the candelabras on the bottom. So now what we're ready to do is shade pretty much all of, of those pieces. We're gonna do that with some Reichland flesh shade. And we're just gonna put a very, very directed shade with a, a detail brush in the spots that we want to have them. So for example, when it comes to doing the face, I'm just gonna put a little bit right there. Move it around a little bit, like so. And I find that works a little bit better than the Bugman's Glow for flesh tones. Then we're gonna put some on the gold. Items that she's carrying. And it creates a warm gold. And then we're going to do the same thing on the candles. And if it seeps into the floor, it's okay because it is just adding to the detail of the floor. It also matches to the candles. So we'll do the rest of this and we'll meet back here in a few minutes. Don't forget to do the purity seals. So here's our model now that that is dried. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna start doing the highlights on those two gold metallic areas. So the first one we're gonna do is anything on um, the body itself. So that's this piece, this piece, the piece that's dangling, as well as the piece on the back um, loincloth here. And we're gonna do all that with Liberator Gold and then two candelabras down at the bottom we're going to do with brass scorpion and it's going to create two different looks here even though we use the same base color so we'll start working on those now so with our liberator gold we're just going to put a highlight on this, these medallions here Really shine them up. As well as the one in the back here. Just like so. with our brass scorpion, we're gonna do the candle holders. just like so. So now that our shades are dry, we're going to finish off the floor so we can permanently affix her to the platform. 
So what we're going to do for this is we're going to do a very, very light dry brush of your shafty bone, which is a nice light stone type color, bone type color. So we're going to dry brush that right across the front surface of all of this, trying to leave the details there. Um, so we're going to do that now. And because it's a bright paint, we want to make sure most of it's gone before we start dry brushing across our flooring here. So as you can see, it's starting to lighten up a bit. So we're going to keep doing this very, very, very lightly. And we'll meet back here in a few minutes once we're happy where it's at. So this is our unit now that we finished with the dry brush of your Shabti Bone. And as you can see, it's lit, and it's lit right up. Uh, it looks actually like stonework now. And it makes a nice base. So the only other thing on this base that we should deal with right now is the candle flames so they're coming up here and what they need is a base of yellow so what i've got for them to start off with is just a uriel yellow so we're going to do a little bit of the flames in uriel yellow and then we'll meet back here in a few minutes so there's our units now that we finished with the uriel yellow and as you can see we've actually added the flames to the candle now so what we're going to do is shade them a little bit and then just darken up the flames as they go up so for shading flame, I usually use Cassinador Yellow, but you could use any red-based flame as well. Um, I just happen to like that one because it does, it's more yellow than some of the redder ones. So we're going to apply that now. Just like so. And all it does is add some depth to that flame. Just like so. So we'll let that dry and we'll move on from there. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take a little bit of the Wild Rider Red. And we're just going to put a tip on top of each of those candles. Just like so. At this point, we can probably glue her back onto the base now because I think we're finished with all of the fine details on the uh, step below. So at this point, we're going to reunite the model and then paint from here. So our model is now all back in one piece. And what we're going to do here is we're going to start tinkering with some of the final details around the model. So what we're going to do first is hit these purity seals and we're going to highlight them with a little bit of Pallid Witch Flesh which should make them, make them more parchment colored. So we'll do that now. We'll make sure that there's not much paint on our brush. And we'll start highlighting up these purity seals. So I'll do the rest of them and we'll meet back here in a few minutes. So now that we've got the model all together and with the purity seals are done as far as the parchments, we're going to do the wax seals of them as well as the flowers on the steps, both of which are going to go screamer pink as a base. So we'll just set that up now. Just a little tiny bit of Screamer Pink. We do these little wax seals here. Just like so. I'm going to move throughout the model as well as the flowers here on the steps. So I'll do those now. We'll meet back here. So there's our Screamer Pink finished. We're going to wait for that to dry. Um, and then we'll add a shade to that. So what we're going to do is go back to the flowers and add a shade now that that's dry. So we're going to do a little bit of Druchy Violet. It'll go on the flowers as well as all those purity seals again. 
So we'll start doing that now. We're just going to carefully add the shade to those flowers. Try not to get any on the steps. So let those dry and then we'll meet back here in another few minutes. So with our Juicy Violet dry, we're going to take a little bit of Emperor's Children Pink and then we're going to dry brush over those flowers again. Just to lighten them up. Get them back to pink there. Something like that. So we're going to keep going at this for a little bit until we get it the way we like it. And then we'll do the same for the purity seals. And then we'll meet back here again. So our flowers look good now, but we're going to add one more little layer of Fulgrim Pink is even lighter still. There's an edge layer. We're just going to hit anything that the light would hit from the top there. Now we're going to start doing the leaves on the roses, and we're going to do that with Death Guard Green. So with another detail brush there. We're just going to pick out each rose very carefully. Each leaf. So we've got something that looks like that. So we'll let that dry and we'll move on from there. So here we are after the Death Guard Green is done. And then what we did is took a little tiny bit of Athonio Camo Shade and just dripped it right on each of those leaves, which let a little bit of depth and hopefully uh, highlight the edges of them. So we'll let all that dry and we'll meet back here in a moment. So. Last of all, we're going to take a little bit of highlight layer of Moot Green and we're going to just very carefully brush that right onto those leaves. Just like that. So with that, I think our flowers are finished, so we'll leave them and we'll move on to one of the other objects that we still have outstanding. In the meanwhile, we're going to take a little bit of Iron Breaker and we're going to start going over the metallic highlight that we haven't touched in quite a while. So pretty much the bolter and anything metal. And we're going to just add a dry brush of that metallic highlight to it. Just like so. Just to light it up a little bit. And we'll do the same with the grenades and uh, the respirator cables and anything else around the model that's metal and we haven't touched in a while. So we'll do that right now. This is our model now that we finished with the metal. And you can see we've really brightened up some of that stuff now. Our next order for business is back to the face. So we're going to take a little bit of Cadian Flesh Tone and we're going to just carefully try to pick out 
the raised areas on the face. Just like that. As you can see, it's gotten a little bit brighter. So now we're going to take a little bit of Kaislev Flesh, which is a little bit brighter than the previous shade. And we just hit those highlights once more. Almost at the top of the brow. The upper and the lower lip and the cheekbones. I think we've got something like that there. So now that our face is finished, what we're going to do is move on to the hair as well as the guillas on the on the shoulder pads, uh, the fleur de lis that'll be on this one. So we're going to all of that's going to get a base layer of celestial gray. So we're just very carefully going to put this on anything that's going to end up white in a few minutes. So now that our um, white base layer is finished, which we did with Celeste Gray, we're going to add a highlight layer of Ultharn Gray, followed by a third highlight layer of White Scar. And between those, we'll build up a nice white color for the hair, the fleur de lis, as well as the aguila on the other shoulder. Now we're going to take our Eutharin Gray, and like we mentioned, we're just going to dry brush over the Celestial Gray. It'll take a couple of coats to get a good coverage that we want here. As you can see, we're just building up the highlights. We're taking our time. Catching just the raised areas. Just like so. So we'll let that dry. We'll do the Aguila and the Fleur de Lis. We'll be back here in a moment. So this is the model after we finish with the Eltharin Gray. And you can see we can definitely see some hair patterns as well as the Aguila patterns and the Fleur de Lis. So now we're going to do another highlight layer over the top with some white scar. So we'll do that now. Just going to take our white scar. Nicely dry brush right over the top of that other one. Just like that. So we'll keep going with this for a little bit longer. And we'll meet back here when it's finished. 
And with the addition of the white scar, our model is almost complete. We also took the time to very, very carefully do the two eyes with white scar as well. And we did the trim along the robes. And then same with the other side here. So we cleaned all of that up. So now there's only a couple of things left to do. The trim on the armor on the shoulder plates needs to be done and it should be done with uh, bright metallic. So we're thinking Stormhost Silver. So we'll do that now and then we'll meet back here. So with the Stormhost Silver finished, we have a nice looking model that we're pretty happy with. The only other thing I think we're gonna add is we're gonna put add some details to the, to the bolter gear. So I'm gonna add a blue tinge similar to what we do with Grey Knights. So I'm gonna take some Gilliman blue and just sort of glaze over that. And I think we may just brighten back up the little inquisitorial sign here. There's one on each side of Fleur de Lis on this side. So we'll do that now. just like that there. Just enough to be subtle. So this is our final unit and as you can see it looks pretty good. Um, I hope yours turned out as well or if you didn't paint one I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you did please feel free to drop a like or subscribe to the channel and you'll be here when we do the next video. Um, and otherwise leave a comment and we will see you at the next uh, painting tutorial video that we do. Thank you for watching and you guys have a pleasant day.